Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I, I want to look, you know, make a couple of comments here. Again, when we look at this budget, it does not it does not touch, touch benefits and social security. Um, and we all recognize we all recognize how important this program is, and it's important that we protect our seniors. If you look at where insolvency is, it keeps moving up. The date gets closer and closer. It's now within the 10-year window. If you, look at, if you look at what happens in nine years, the shortfall will be approximately $616 billion in year one, in year one. This amendment, if you look at it, talking about removing the, the cap on $400,000 would add approximately $86 billion over the 10-year window. It is simply not enough to cover the, to the major shortfall, and we're doing it in a way where we haven't analyzed what that would do to the overall economy in terms of productivity and job creation by, con by, by continuing to raise taxes. We need to be a little bit more intellectually honest, and we need to do this in a bipartisan way. My colleagues on the other side of the aisle, um, and my dear friend from, um, from Connecticut, Mr. Larson, keeps talking about wanting to expand Social Security. I think our first priority should be able to, should be to protect <coughs> Social Security for the, benefit, for the folks that have already earned and, and have paid into it. And also, I think we need to be—I think we need to be honest about what this program is. When <clears throat> the the ranking member talked about um, his dad paying into the system, just as my parents have as well, um, it—they made payments into the system to help support other retirees. And what what we're running into is that we don't have enough workers right now paying into the system for the current number of retirees, and that, and that math is only getting worse. And I'd like to add one other thing. If we simply do this by saying we're gonna, we're gonna raise taxes, we are, we, are, we are missing the boat on something that's happening <clears throat> in our economy that's, tr that's pretty dramatic, and that is the advent of artificial intelligence and the impact that it could have on the workforce. And every single one of the jobs that potentially could be eliminated by, by AI is, is another hit to the solvency of both Social Security and Medicare. So I simply think that just raising taxes will have a, will have a negative impact on the economy, and I think that we need, and it's going to create fewer workers. We've seen this time and time again. As taxes go up, productivity goes down. We see, we see closures. We, we see... We see way too many pressures on business and our job creators can't continue to add people to their payrolls, which is actually under the current funding formula, what we need to extend solvency more than anything else. If we don't, if we don't look at this in a holistic fashion and simply say, let's just, let's just make the wealthiest Americans carry more of the burden, because currently about 1% of the population pays about 40% of the taxes. At some point, you break that you break those folks in the economy and the economy crashes. We need to be looking at this in a holistic way, in a way that's intellectually honest, and I would urge a no vote on this. And with that, Mr. Chairman, if I could, um, unanimous request, unanimous consent to um, put, into, put into the uh, record the House Budget Committee um, script um, related to the annual report from the Board of Trustees and the um, their, their annual report. Without objection, so ordered. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Um, with the